Hey guys, just wanted to let you know it's been an interesting time. I'm sorry for the lack of uploads recently. Um, I went freelance completely uh, back in July and I've been doing a lot of different work since then. Um, so I've been finding myself very busy, but I still intend to get these videos done and up. So you guys teach you guys some new things, new ways of doing things and improving your skills a bit. Um, but yeah, no, I've been, I've been flat out. This is my website. Uh, you may have been here. You can buy, uh, I go over some of the lessons here. You can buy um, some of the files I've used to create the lessons. And there's also, these are just personal pieces. These are not the projects I've been working on recently. Um, but these are just portfolio pieces to promote the website. Uh, but this is what I've been focusing on. Getting this done, getting, getting the word out there and working. And like I said, it's been going well. But anyway, I want to show you how to create some coated materials. Um, and I'll go into this in a second uh, in the video which I pre-recorded. But I think this is pretty cool because you can get a real nice shine on top of another uh, duller shine. Much like if you have a lacquer or a coat on something. So this is the first video I'm going to show you here. But I've got a bunch more which I intend to get out. Uh, it's just finding the time to get these done and get these over to you so you can improve your quality. All right, here we go. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover creating coated materials, creating um, glosses, creating lacquers, polishes, car paints, uh, some resins. Uh, basically, what we're looking at here is we're looking at two different types of reflections. So you have these sharp reflections here, and you have these duller reflections. Same here, you have the duller and the sharper, and the duller reflections going on here, and the sharper ones. And this is when you have you know, two different types of reflective materials on top of each other. You have a lacquer on top of a, a brass or a bronze, um, it can create it, or, or you have it on top of a vinyl um, on the floor, or you have it, um, you have it with a resin. Like if I look at these examples here, on this resin, this is not the best example, but here you're gonna have, see how this resin here has these kind of metallic type reflections that's what's making this so light here and yet this resin will be polished so here this same polish here will be on top of the resin you can't see it here because it's reflecting the white wall but this is a sharp reflection so you'll need this double type of reflections going on here um here you can see it here this these are reflections happening here and here you've got these sharp reflections Let's see some other examples. Um, here you've got, see these duller reflections here, this brush, these are dull reflections, and then you've got these sharp polish reflections going on here. Again here, you have dull reflections here, and you have sharp reflections here. Now, again, this isn't the best example, but I want to cover also with like French polish. Um, another pol in many cases, you're just going to get those sharp reflections, but in some you're going to have the duller reflections of the wood underneath and the sharper reflection on top. Like with car paint, you know, you can clearly see this speckled reflection going on here, and yet here you have this sharp reflection. So this is what we're really dealing with, is these double reflections in one material, and we're looking at how you create that. Here it's very obvious, here you've got dull reflections going on, here you've got a dull reflection, and here it's super sharp. So it's fairly easy to easy to put this together and to do this. I've been doing this quite a bit recently. I've had some resin materials, I've had various other materials, um, and I just wanted to show you how to do this quickly because it's simple to do, and effective, and necessary. The room's fairly basic. We've just got some IES lights, a skirting board, a wall, a floor, and a couple other lights here, and a camera. Okay, when we create these, I cheat these materials a lot. Um, I'll often just use one map. I'm in a rush. I don't have time to create many different maps. So I'll use one, and I'll use color corrections to make it lighter and darker. Um, and so that's what I've done here, and that's what I've done with all of these. I'll cover, you know, more advanced materials when you get hero items and you really want them to look a certain way. But here I'm just trying to show you how to get this double reflection going on. So 
you come over here, you can click and create a V-Ray material. And then if I just, on here, if I right click on this, I can go reveal the location in the Explorer and it'll bring up where it is here in the Explorer. So this is the image. This is the image which I've used. So I'm just going to drag this and drop it in there. And then I can plug this into Diffuse. And I'm going to plug this into Reflect. And bear in mind, yes, it's a concrete, but I'm creating this metal sort of material. I'm going to plug this into Reflective Glossiness. And for ease, I'm just going to then come and turn this off. And we can immediately see what's occurring here. And it's starting to become that, you know, not defined, not very sharp um, reflections going on. But if I open this up and if I look at it like this, you can see with the maps as it is, you've got sharp and dull reflections here. And that's not what I'm after. I'm after the sharp reflections on top of the dull reflections. So what I'm going to do is just come to here and maps general. Um, and if you need to open your material editor, you can just, you know, click this button here at the top, this one here, or you can press M to get it open. Um, but I'm going to come here, I'm going to get a color correction, and I'm going to drag and drop this into diffuse. And with diffuse, because I like it, I like it dark. So I'm just going to double click on this, and then just drag, go to advanced, and just change this gamma down to about 0.5. And, oh, it stayed the same. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to drag it down further. Let's put it down to 0.2. That should make it pretty black. Okay. I like that more than the whiter edges, although, you know, I don't think one is accurate and one isn't. Different types of metals act differently. And, you know, if you're creating a steel or something like this, it's been weathered, it's had a lot of different elements kick in and have an effect on it. So we're going to take this and put this in Reflective Glossiness. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave this one in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this material. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to go into the maps. And this Reflective Glossiness here is at 1. So let's drop that down to 0.3. I often then press Escape because it's still you know, marked after you've done 0.3. And I want to come make sure it's out of there. So I press Escape. And I'm going to come down here to Reflective Glossiness, and I'm just going to say only use. I'm just going to say only use this map like 30%. And let's push that up a bit. Let's put that to 40. Okay, let's try 60. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave it there. So that just means it's 60% the map, and it's you know 40% this Reflective Glossiness amount here. So. Well, that's looking pretty good. And then what we want to do is just take a V-Ray blend material here, double click on that, bring it over here, uh, assign this one here as the base. And what I'm going to do is just delete, oh, sorry, just close this. And now we have it as the base. So what we need to do is create like a mirror material. So I'm just going to get a new mirror material and I'm going to create a perfect mirror material and turn off Fresnel and that's it. Now this is more perfect than real material mirrors because this is going to reflect 100% of everything in the scene. And if I put this now into, into, sorry, into coat one here and then just make so you can see this in there. You can see what's uh, happening here. You see how you get both of these on top of each other here? So you get these really sharp reflections and you get this dull reflection here going on. And that's exactly what we want to, what we want to be happening. But we just need to say how much we want this coat in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fall off. And we're going to make it slightly more reflective on the edges. So you get that Fresnel reflection going on. We're going to put that into the blend. And you can see by default what it does is it just makes it, because it's black in the middle, look. This is the front and that's the side. So because it's black at the front, it makes this on the front completely non-reflective. Well, it's reflective, but it makes it completely this one. And on the sides, it makes it this one. Um, and that's not really what we want. So we're gonna just double click here and just take this mix curve. 
uh, just bring this up and I'm going to add in a point here and this is saying look instead of the side being black it's mixing these two together so it's mixing it to about you know 40% white so you start seeing it here on the front and I put this dot in here and I'm going to oops just control Z to get rid of that extra one and I right clicked to get it over to move I'm going to drag that down so it's about level with the other one right click and make that bezier smooth and then drag this down drag this down just a bit to about there so it doesn't get completely glossy on the edge but it gets a bit and then what I'm going to do is take all three of these and drag these down because I don't want it that much I want it less drag it down a bit more and then there we go open preview window and here you can see you've got these sharp reflections and you've got the duller reflections there. And if you want more sharp reflections, you can just push this up a bit. And you can affect it that way. Now with this one here, you can see I've also come along and, you know, I've gone to this original material and I've put anisotropy. I think I normally like to put that at about 0.45 and then the rotation is probably minus 0.45, I think. Yeah, actually it's a bit higher, it's like 0.6. So that's the basic format. That's how I've created these different materials. You know, this wood here, I didn't turn off the Fresnel, I left that on. And again, you've got the metal material here, the, the chrome material, and you've got the fall off here. Um, and this is more of a kind of vinyl going on or a plastic, a coated plastic going on. Um, just to show you so you can see exactly how I created these ones, just so it's no secret. Um, here, anisotropy. I put the, this map actually into the anisotropy uh, slot and I set it to 20%. And if I open this preview window, I'll just turn that on and off just so you can see what it does. If I turn this map off completely, pay attention to this, see how that changes. So that map is changing the anisotropy amounts. So you get varying amounts and it puts some extra change in there. That's what it's doing. Um, but again, this one is that, that concrete texture you saw and it's plugged into a color correction. And this I would just went to advanced. Yeah, I did 0.2 as I did on the other one. And reflective glossiness, I set this at two. And this guy, reflective glossiness at 100% and reflections at 100%. And this is literally that exact same chrome material. And the fall off, I had it down like this. So I wanted it slightly more reflective at the edges, but not loads. So that was for the blended metal material for this wood. This is the image, by the way. Yeah. So that's the image which I've used. Um, and then I've got color correction here bring it into the reflection slot and that's you know if I had the Fresnel turn off that would be completely different but I've left Fresnel on and Fresnel IRR on at 1.6 so this is gamma set to 2 you know by default it comes in like this so you got to come over and click on advanced and then change that reflective glossiness I set that to 5 and yeah these are all at 100% and bump, I've got that set down lower too. So you just get some very, very slight bump going on. Okay. And then again, this is the metal material. And I believe this fall off is exactly the same as the last one. Yeah. So the third one is this uh, blue, I don't know, lino or something like that. And again, I've used the same concrete material here for the reflections. And this goes into this color correction for the reflective glossiness. I set it down to 0.7. And this is at two for the reflection. And if you come here, Fresnel Reflections is on, but I raise this up to three. And I set that reflective glossiness at 0.6. And here I put the reflection down to 50, and here the glossiness down to 50. If this goes back up to 100, you can see the change which happens. It just comes really, really sharp and stark. So I don't really want that. So, you know, this reflection I put all the way up, but by putting this down to 50, it means you've got 50% this and 50% that. So, you know, even though this is at white, really you're getting like 128. 
coming through as the reflective if this is set at 50% because the rest is the map. And the glossiness here is at 50. And then, um, yeah, and this is all exactly the same here. So this is how you create these materials. It's how you get uh, reflective glossiness on top of car paint, on top of coated metals, on top of resin, on top of things like that. And as you can see from the render, it can come out looking really nice. I've actually tweaked this very, very slightly in Photoshop. I think the default render. Still really awesome here. And then when I tweak that in Photoshop, I use the uh, Arian and then color effects. So if you go filter, you know, I used random control Arian FX tone mapping. I don't know if you can still get this. In this Nick collection, this was free when I got it. Um, and again, I think I've got another tutorial which shows where you can get this. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's been sold since to another company, but they were giving everything away for free. So it's like 400 pounds worth of software. You know, it has a certain depth and a certain wow to the image. So that's how I make quick materials, uh, quick lacquer materials, quick coated materials uh, in V-Ray and 3DS Max.